All right, guys. Uh, I'll be shooting these videos out of order. I'm not sorry because I'm not perfect. Uh, today we're going to go right to the basics of low voltage electrical. Not to be confused with high voltage like you find on your house, your garage, whatever. We're talking about DC or direct current. Okay, this is going to be, for sake of argument for this video, either 12 or 24 volt found in all cars and trucks. Okay, most every vehicle on the road today is going to be 12 volt DC under the hood. There are cases of some heavy vehicles and military vehicles using 24 volt. And if you go way back in the past, like the 40s, even in the 50s, some cars even used 6 volt. Okay? So let's get started, shall we? We're going to go over how to read a electrical diagram and what you know the different symbology means now again as I've said before in my videos I don't have a budget I don't so everything is going to be drawn freehand and uh, you're just gonna to have to suck it up and deal first picture that is a battery okay this is what contains the energy that's going to go through your wires. This picture here, most people will know this as a ground. Others will refer to this as earth, okay? Both terms are completely acceptable for this. What goes on in a direct current circuit in the ground path, typically you're going to find the battery. Positive goes to the different appliances, lights, horns, fans, heaters, all that fun stuff. The ground on the battery will say, okay, the negative post here on the battery, all right, they just run a big ass cable to the frame of the car. And then what happens is anything tied to this circuit, the ground circuit, uses the car as a giant conduit or wire back to the negative post of the battery. So that way there's not 10,000 wires going back to one spot. Okay? That's a wire. Okay? In more complex circuits you might see some letters on either side of it. BRN, okay, for example, it would be brown. BRN slash BLK, that is brown with a black stripe, okay? Whenever there are two colors on a wire separated by a slash, the primary color is the first uh, set of letters. So brown would be the primary color, and then the tracer if you will, or the stripe would be the second color. So brown with a black tracer would be BRN slash BLK. Okay. This is a switch. This one is in the closed position. When we're talking about switches, they're either going to be open or closed. For those of us playing at home, a closed switch means it is on, allowing power to go through. This, focus, is an open switch, meaning there's a break where the current of electricity will be going through, which means it is off. Okay, again, we refer to switches as either being open or closed. This is a momentary switch, which means 
It's only on or closed for a moment. Think of a horn button, a window button, a lock button. You're only making contact across this switch as long as you're holding this down. Okay? When this is pushed down, electricity can go through. So think the best example would be your horn button. As long as you're holding your hand on the steering wheel at the lady in front of you at the light, it makes a big loud noise. As soon as you let go, it's back to this position open. This is a fuse. A fuse is a thermoelectric device basically designed to burn up and protect whatever circuit it's applied to. They're typically run in line, so we'd say the battery is here, then there's the fuse, then there's whatever the battery is powering, and then ground. If something happens between here and here, that fuse is going to pop, protecting the rest of the circuit, so there's no chance for fires or worse damage. In a lot of instances, you're going to see a number on either side of this fuse, 5, 10, 15, 2 and a half, 30. That is the rating of the fuse. How many amps it will take before it goes pop? Back to the wiring. This is an intersection, okay? Those are two different wires crossing over each other. They are not connected, they're just laying across each other, okay? This is two different wires in either a splice or a connection. When you see the two wires and there's a dot, that dot represents a connection, okay? For sake of argument, we'll go back to this fuse picture. Diagrams may use a black dot or a circle like that, okay? Just showing that it's a connection. We're gonna get into a little advanced stuff. This stuff you're probably not gonna see until much later. This is an amp meter. This actually measures the amount of amps that a circuit is drawing, okay? This is a voltmeter. This measures the amount of voltage being supplied or consumed by an appliance. Okay? This one here is a motor. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to go any further into depth on that one, huh? Now, there's, these next two are not interchangeable. This is a lamp. Okay? There's two different symbols that people use, either the one with the curly Q in it or one with a circle with an X in it. There is a difference now. These are not LEDs. These are going to be like regular light bulbs. Okay? This is a diode, okay? You see the arrow in this picture? Voltage is only allowed to flow one way. This would be like a wall. Voltage cannot go back the other way, so it always flows from positive to negative in this configuration. That is your diode. Similar symbol, but a little bit different. This is a light emitting diode, otherwise known as an LED. This one again flows electricity in one direction only. Okay? Again, positive to negative. You cannot run it backwards. Okay? Diodes are used when you're trying to regulate the, the flow of electricity. Okay? We'll get into that much later. That's not for tonight. This is a relay, 
Uh, I talked about this in a couple of previous videos. This is, uh, the best way to put it, a glorified switch. You've got a switch on one side, and then you've got a coil on the other. This is going to have a you know, magnet in it, so when you energize this side, you know, it, this, this switch will swing. Then when you de-energize it, it snaps back the other way. We'll talk more about that later. Maybe not in this video, but I'll recap the other videos I talked about those in. This is a resistor. Okay, resistors are just that. It resists the flow of electricity. You might not want, you know, every bit of that electricity going through a circuit, so you've got to step it down or slow it down. This is what will do it. Okay. Finally, this is a variable resistor. Two symbols, same object. My resistor looks like that. A lot of other people use this logo as well. It's just a rectangle with an arrow going through it. Variable resistor, the best thing I can tell you is it's the volume knob on your stereo. Turn it to the right, it gets loud. Turn it to the left, it gets quiet. What you're doing is either increasing or decreasing the amount of resistance. Obviously, the less resistance you got, in the wire going to an appliance, the more energy that appliance can use. So when you're, when you're dealing with like a motor and you turn this thing all the way to the left, that motor is barely going to turn. Okay? And you start turning that thing to the right and that motor is going to start being able to use more and more voltage until it spins wide open free. Okay. Those are the symbols I want to focus on here in the next few episodes or so that I do uh, electrical. Now we're going to get into some figures, okay? So figure one, okay, there's your battery. You got a positive wire going to the bulb. You can see the bulb is lit up because you got a ground wire going right back to the battery, which means you have a complete circuit. It's closed, which means volt battery, you know, the voltage can go from one end of the circuit to the other, round and round, allowing this to light up. Figure two, there's your open switch. When a circuit is open, electricity cannot go from the battery to the bulb. You can see here I don't have the bulb lit up. Okay? Figure three is just the opposite of figure two. Now the switch is closed and the bulb is lit up. Okay? And last but not least for tonight is figure four. This is going to be a little bit different. Here's your positive coming out of the battery. It's hitting the bulb and then there's that goofy ground switch, ground symbol I told you about earlier. Notice, the negative side of your battery, let me just make this clear for you, okay? There's negative, there's positive. The negative side of the battery is tied off by a wire to the, the frame of the car. The negative wire coming off of this turn signal bulb is tied off to a fender which is also connected to the frame. Which all that means, you, you've got the car as your wire completing the circuit. Okay? This sure as hell beats having, you know, 50 to 100 wires going to one spot. Saves you on, when, if you're building something from scratch, it saves you from all the extra cost of buying wire, and if, you, if weight is an issue, which in a lot of cases it is, the less stuff you, you put into a car, the better. 
So now you're using half as many wires. I hope this little introduction to electrical helps some guys out. As uh, I, I still get messages all the time, you know, hey man, electrical is witchcraft. I don't want to do electrical. You can't pay me to do electrical. This is simple. I mean, this, these, these four graphics here are about as simple as it gets when it comes to electrical. But, on the other side of that coin, it's really just as complex. Because if you break it down, let me clear this off real quick and I'll show you something. Okay, we've got a couple minutes before I have to call it quits for the night. All right. This right here, focus you fuck. Let's uh, let's bring you up a little bit, huh? Other up, please. There's your battery again. Okay. Here's one set of wires going through one bulb, lighting it up. And then here's another set of wires spliced in or connected. You see those are those little dots I was telling you about right here. So we'll say this is a headlamp. And here's two and two tail lamp bulbs or two marker lamp bulbs on a motorcycle. As soon as you close this, making a, a complete loop, all of these turn on. Then you can throw a switch in here and turn that bulb off. And you can throw a switch in here and turn these bulbs off or have one set on and one set off. This is what they call a parallel circuit. A series circuit, you would have bulb, bulb, bulb. We'll go here. All right. In this case, I'm just going to draw them like this. I know uh, my handwriting is terrible, but this is a series circuit, all right? These three bulbs are in a series. As long as these three bulbs are in good working order, they'll all light up, all right? As soon as bulb blows out, all three bulbs are dead, okay? If you want a good example of a series circuit, look at a Christmas tree. One of those bulbs goes, the whole damn tree goes dark. This parallel circuit, also you'll find on Christmas trees, this is the one where if this bulb goes dead, I'll just erase it. Take it right out of the equation, it's gone. Okay? These two bulbs will stay working because there's what these wires bypass, okay? That's the advantage of having a parallel circuit over the series circuit. If you've got a bunch of crap on one single line and one thing goes bad, the whole blasted thing is done. Uh, so, yeah, this is about as basic as you're gonna get with me when it comes to electrical. From here on out, it's going to get a little bit busier and a little bit busier. I'm going to start showing you what this all, you know, further means. Okay, I can, I'll start getting into more complex circuits with you guys. 
you know how and and show you how it works and why it works.